Um, the election in Oshun comes up, as you know, on Saturday. Uh, we're going to be here, needless to say. Um, it's going to be round-the-clock coverage as uh, usual. Uh, but leading up to it, uh, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, uh, chair of the National Peace Committee, has said um, that um, tomorrow a peace accord is going to be signed. Candidates uh, to sort of uh, come to agreement that um, they will, everybody will be acting towards a free, fair uh, conduct of the election. Um, it's important in all elections, and uh, General Abdul Salami Abubakar has been very active in that regard. So uh, it's like um, Oshun is no uh, different. Okay, um, we also, uh, our guest this morning, let me introduce him, Comrade uh, Mark Adebayo. Uh, we're reaching him uh, in our Buja studio. He's an activist, a rights activist, and uh, public affairs analyst. Uh, good morning to you, Comrade. Good morning, comrade. Good morning, sir. Thank uh, you for uh, thank having me. Thank you very me. much. Indeed, morning, it's a it's our pleasure. Thank you. Um, we we shall we'll talk about it, but let's just get a little background report um, that went out earlier. But we'll use it to set the scene here, uh, and then we'll come to you and uh, we'll we'll chat about uh, uh, the Oshun election uh, coming up on Saturday. That report now. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. His residence was said to have been attacked in the early hours of Monday by some suspected political thoughts. Though nobody was shot, the former deputy speaker of the House of Representatives alleged that the attack was carried out by his political opponents. Hey, we, we've reported to the police. These men have gone to the police to the police station in my area that is in Lobo to make a report. And the DPO, that is the Fishna Police Office, in a couple of hours, that case will be transferred to the High Command in Oshogbo. And now we expect the police to quickly act on it. At this program organized to give their support to Lassen Yusuf, the group believes he will emerge as the governor of the state. He is the person that has asked the National Connect, that has worked at the national level. He, he understands the template of Nigeria. He understands the template of Oshogbo. He's born here, he's schooled here, he lives here. He don't live in Abuja. He's not a fake politician, he's a realist. But the chief press secretary to the state governor, Ismail Omipida, says Lassu Yusuf is not a threat to his principal's ambition and will not have been attacked by members of the APC, has been alleged. He wants the police to carry out thorough investigations on the matter. A candidate of the PDP who is running for Oshun West is on record where he said clearly that supporters should look for gadgets, should look for cutlasses, should look for stones to attack members of the PD, uh, APC. It is also on record that the House of Reps candidate of the PDP on air, the video, the video is out there in the public space, claiming that his expertise in using bomb and grenade to launch attack on people. So if indeed we were to be violent, if indeed we were what Honorable Lassen Yusuf is painting us to be, I'm sure we probably would have been after PDP. If we are not after PDP, why on earth should we be after Honorable Lassun Yusuf? The election is four days away from now. Rafi Hamid, TVC News, Oshogo. Well, um, uh, so, Comrade Adebayo, could you, could, can you hear us? Just yes, sort I'm of checking. Uh, okay. We, you, you saw that little report there. Um, uh, uh, let me just ask you, because um, yeah, as an activist you. yourself, uh, as a rights activist and a public affairs analyst, uh, uh, let me ask you first, what are your expectations? Never mind the hullabaloo, um, some, of, some worrying signals. Let me start first from your premise. What are your expectations uh, for the conduct of the election on Saturday? The number one thing is that, one uh, thing is that I know that, uh, know that uh, the people of Oshun State, my state, my beloved state, uh, are prepared to go to the elections to cast their foes and to elect a governor of their choice in a peaceful, convivial atmosphere. 
And because we are peaceful people, we are peace-loving people in Oshun State, it's going to happen. They will elect, the people are going out there, the electorate will go out there and elect a, a candidate of their choice. And considering the incredible, the sterling performances of the incumbent governor, Governor Oyetola, we are sure that it's going to, uh, it's going to come out uh, tops in the election. Uh, it's quite unfortunate and very condemnable and reprehensible, the attacks against uh, Honorable Lassun Yusuf, very, very unfortunate, and we condemn it in all ramifications. It shouldn't be. That's not who we are in Oshun State. And whoever orchestrated that attack, because, you see, it's also very foolish. I think some people just want to create unnecessary acrimony where it doesn't exist. They just want to uh, create crisis in Oshun State. But they are not going to be, they are not going to be successful. The, the issue is that... Uh, why Honorable Lassun Yusuf, if people do not have a kind of a hidden agenda to disrupt the election on Saturday? They just, why? You know, I mean, that's somebody, well, I, I hope, we, I, I doubt if we'll be able to even garner up to 5% of the votes in Oshun State. Why, why him? Why attack him? Just, just, people just want to disrupt the election. That's what wants to happen. So, but thank God they have been defeated. Thank God they, they were not successful in, uh, you know, in killing him or killing anybody in that attack. We thank God for that. And uh, we want to encourage the security agencies to go after whoever did that and uh, unveil the perpetrators of that crime, which is not okay. uh, uh, good for our, our elections, it's not good for Ocean State, it's not good for our state. And uh, okay. we just, just because you, people you, know you that. You said, uh, uh, Honorable, to, on, uh, I beg about it. Comrade, to comrade Mark. To violence. Okay, you, you, you said in passing there uh, that, you know, uh, Honorable Alassane Yusuf in your opinion, might not get 5% of the, you know, of the vote. So what, what you, you're wondering what the uh, issue is about. But as you know, you heard him yourself at the um, uh, debate that was held recently. Um, he, he actually was saying that uh, he was confident. He was actually confident of winning. Uh, could, could that be, uh, uh, I don't know, as much as everybody agrees that no to violence. But... He was saying he's confident of uh, uh, winning. Uh, it's, it's sort of, and if, as you say, he probably won't get more than 5%, why was he made the target, just as you seem nonplussed? Um, but it, it, all of this is not so much about that gentleman individually, but the whole propensity for violence in, uh, in a state like Oshun. Um, people, unfortunately, some people would appear to be making it a do or die affair. Well, uh, uh, the, the issue is that uh, you know, do or die, do or die affair in, our, in the Nigerian politics is uh, is a function of the atrocious environment of the Nigerian political uh, state. Um, uh, thank God we have. You see, I've been the aside from the fact that I'm an indigenous of Oshun State, I was also invited as a member of the civil society to inspect the state, look at what the. Uh, programs have been in the last uh, three and a half years, what uh, uh, the projects have been and all the things that have been done or achieved in the state. And so uh, it gave me a first hand, and the report from that uh, assessment store gave me a first hand uh, knowledge of what has been happening in, uh, in Oshun State. For people, it's only politicians who know that they will lose, who will engage in do or die. There is no way a sitting governor who knows he's going to win his re-election because of his performances, his sterling performances, who want to orchestrate violence against an opponent that he knows is not a threat to him. I, as for Honorable Lasso, yes, every politician that wants to conserve an election, you know, wants to win. Because that is the number one objective of every political party and every politician, to win power. That is the number one objection, that is the number one vision, and that is the number one focus of every politician. Nobody, no politician will tell you he's going to lose, even if he doesn't have structure, even if he doesn't have... Uh, the necessary uh, equipment to win an election. Nobody will tell you he's going to lose. Every everybody, everybody going to a contest says he's going to win. At the end of the day, no people went to to contest at, uh, at the uh, party primaries in the last election, and they came out and said, "Ah, they are going to win. They are going to win 90 percent." Some people even said God said they were going to win, but they, go, they scored zero. It's got zero in that in, in the primaries, not, not even the national election. So every politician will tell you he's going to win. Every politician will tell you that maybe probably he has been anointed by God or by a man of God or whatever. So, but the issue is that uh, what I'm trying, the point I'm making is that definitely 
Honorable Lassu Yusuf is not a lightweight in Russian politics. Definitely he's not. But I'm saying that in this election, from what I've seen, from the general, from the first populi and the general consensus of opinion in, in the state of Oshu, in Oshu State, today, I believe very strongly that the incumbent governor, Oyetola, is returning as, as the next governor of Oshu State. I mean, that is all. You, you may say it's debatable, but uh, the issue is that it is, realistically speaking, the statistics on ground, the consensus of opinion on ground, the mass of opinion on ground in Oshu State today tends to what is it's very favorable to the incumbent governor of Oshun State. And he's returning. He's going to come back as a, as a governor. And you know, if you look at the, the character of Ano Yetola, a personable and a complete gentleman to the core, you will realize that he will never be a party to sponsoring violence against an opponent. Especially an opponent that he knows that is not a threat to him. An opponent he knows that cannot, cannot you know, shake him in any way, politically speaking, or should state. He's not going to be part let, of let that. Me ask so you, that is why, let, when people allege things, it is on the part of who alleges to prove the allegations. So that is it. Uh, we can only encourage the, the people of Oshun state to, because we are peace-loving people, to go to the election and all stakeholders to ensure that they do not orchestrate violence in Oshun state. What is important on Saturday is that for Oshun people to win, not even APC or PDP or Labour or ADC or Accord Party. It's about the people of Oshun winning and giving progress back to the state. That is what is important. It's not about uh, uh, politicians and uh, political parties. For the Oshun people to win on Saturday in a peaceful environment. Once the election is cast in a peaceful environment, once we hold the election in a peaceful environment, in a free, fair and credible environment, the winning, the victory goes to the Oshun people. It's not to any politician. And I do know, okay. like I said, I'm extremely confident in the, in the performances of Governor Yetola in the next three plus year, in the last three plus years of his administration that is going to give him a winning ticket. He's a gentleman, he's a, he's a personable individual, well, he's an accommodating exactly. governor with uh, open door policy. This is a governor you can relate with one or one, even whether you don't know him before. Okay. And um, this time around, uh, if it was tough, you know, which is arguable, uh, the last time around, um, because he was coming to office, even though he had been, you know, uh, he was highly experienced in government, um, this time he has a report card uh, that people can actually uh, refer to. Uh, we'll come to that in a moment. But the other thing, as you've been stressing, is the importance of peace and uh, tranquility uh, indeed, as you said, for the people of Oshun. So this is where uh, the National Peace Committee of uh, General Abdul Salami Abubakar comes in. Um, there will be a signing tomorrow among all parties. Uh, this is surely something that you would load yourself. This is a laudable um, uh, objective. Absolutely. So, uh, yes, exactly. You know, um, the General Abubakar Abu Salam Peace Committee has been uh, an integral and essential part of our, of our national, of our democratic processes. And we, uh, all Nigerians must support that initiative. It's very, very important. I know that uh, all peace loving contestants will go there and sign along the dotted lines tomorrow to ensure there will be peace and tranquility in the elections. Um, and it is important, it's important for everyone, politicians and the electorate alike, to ensure that it's a peaceful conduct of election on Saturday. It's very, very important for all of us. We should not, because of politics, you know, born. We, somebody among the contestants, you know, said that there'll be fire of fire, money for money, this and that, and, uh, you know, um, that is not the kind of politics we should be playing. That's not the kind of characterization we should be promoting in our national politics. It should be that... Uh, I will give your, you people the best, like Oyetola has been saying, that I will do my best. You know, the scorecard of Oyetola, the, the first time nobody knew what he was going to do, and now he came, he ensured that uh, he cancelled modulated salary structure, and he's paying full salary. He ensured that he's paying the pensions as at when due. He ensured that 320 health centers, primary health care centers in Oshu State were reformed, equipped, staffed, and working perfectly in Oshun State today. He ensured that there's infrastructural, you know, development in the state, especially in the area of roads. 
you know, Oshu State used to be one of the worst in terms of roads and infrastructure in the country. But today, because of the commitment, despite the fact that you know, Oshu State is getting probably less than, maybe less than 50% of what Lagos or River State is getting, the man is doing his best because of the I know, In fact, there was a time that Oshu State, I think, got less than a billion naira from the federal from the federal location. Uh, this on a monthly basis. In fact, it got less than 500 million naira. I still, it's still going ahead to pay salaries, to pay pensions, and to do all those infrastructures. Go to Orita Olaya, go to you know Bogon, Akoda, and the other area, and then even Oshogbo, Ikiru, Ilarogun road assist. Wonderful. That's about a 70 kilometer stretch of roads, and it's a federal road though. And this man has continued to ensure that he's maintaining those roads, he's constructing them. And uh, renovating the roads and doing everything. Look at the educational sector in Oshun State. Now, the okay. Oshun State Insurance uh, Health Insurance Scheme is one of the best in the country today. You know, that's why the fact that the state is, in terms of uh, revenue generation, is a modest, sorry, is a very modest state in terms of revenue, revenue generation because of the governor they have, who is very good at uh, managing resources. He has been able to do all those things. He has been able to do. So, a, a perfect gentleman, a peace-loving man, a man. You know. Uh, Governor Yetona is not the kind of person given to talking too much. It is his work that is talking for him in Oshun State today. And the people, the the, the hoi poloi, the, the, the general people, you know, uh, com, co connect with him directly. Because of, you know, he, he runs a, 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 a privately opened up policy. Anybody in Oshun State can walk in and see the governor. And, you know, that is what is good for, that is the thing for me as a human rights activist. One booking of appointment, you want to see the governor, you want to ask him questions about what he has done in the state, and then the door was open. You know, no, no protocols, no difficult protocols, no cumbersome processes of, of seeing the governor. So, and then we were able to go around the state to, to, to see, to assess what he has been able to do. That is the thing for me. It's not every state you can go to and say you want to assess projects. They will set up their, their talks against you and drive you out of the state. Say, so what do you well, mean you want to call you a human right activist? Some people don't even want to hear the word right activist because they know uh, you are coming probably to question or to query their integrity of their governance. But if you have nothing to hide, you will just allow people to come and do their job and go. So that is it. We try to be neutral as much as possible and then we try to balance our reportage and our assessment and analysis of developments in, in, in the state or, or nationally, as it were. That is the issue. I well, do or die is not good for our polity, it's not good for our politics, it's not good for our nation, it's not good for anywhere in Nigeria. Indeed. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I, I wish, um, well, you know, we'll, we'll be able to get other people in to also speak about the election, uh, because clearly your horse in the race is the sitting governor, Gwega uh, Isaka Oyetola. And um, there's nothing wrong with that, but there are other people uh, in the race uh, that we will be hearing from. Uh, for instance, one of the things I've heard saying is that there's a debt overhang, um, which is not necessarily uh, to the benefit of uh, Oshun. Um, to the governor's credit, he says that, yeah, there is something of a debt, but that he, um, he, he has sort of um, worked at, at reducing it. Uh, but this is where other people are saying that they would handle things uh, differently. Uh, talking about the uh, revenue situation in Oshun for the moment, what would what, what can you tell us about that? Well, the, the thing is that you know, the government has to balance its needs with uh, not overburdening the people in terms of uh, I, in the name of IGR. You know, you have to be very careful. You can't be looking for money desperately as to overburden the people that are already overburdened. So, uh, uh, in terms of revenue generation, the, the, what is happening in the state now, the area of encouraging entrepreneurs to invest in the economy of Oshun State is top notch. And that is, that will, I'm sure that is going to gather momentum in terms of revenue generation for the state. And I think the government should continue in that uh, same processes of encouraging. Uh, medium, small scale uh, businesses to continue to uh, to be buoyant as it's currently on ongoing in Oshun State. That will, that's going to bring in more revenue generation for the state. And uh, that's yeah, a perfect initiative I, from I, the current governor. And I think they yeah. should continue to increase activities in that sector. O other, mm -hmm. uh, other people are saying they are probably going to do it differently. I don't know how they are going to do it. But if you go into Oshun State and you begin to engage in double tra taxations or triple taxation, the people are going to rebel against you. 
because they are already overburdened. Indeed. So uh, Indeed. that is why the government is taking it very easy, I believe, on the people and not begin to collect all these multiple taxes that could, you know, sort of uh, begin to entrench poverty in the state. You know, it's been taking a while for the government to be able to regulate certain economic and social activities in the state to ensure that people enjoy the welfare of governance and benefit of the democracy in, in, in Oshun State. You will see that we, we, in Oshun State, as is not on strike, you know, the Oshun, Union Oshun is, is working 247. I have a, I have a child who's, who's, in that, who's in that institution. I'm so happy that he's, he's not at home. I have, another, I have other children who are now at home who are uh, going to other higher institutions, but who are now at home because of Asu strike that is going to almost uh, half a year now. So I'm not happy, yeah. but in, the one in, Osh in Union Oshun is still in school, has, has been in school. So mm. that, that makes me happy. It, it, it tells you about the capacity and integrity of the uh, of the governor to manage uh, labor relations matters. And kudos to him for doing that. At least well, Union well, Oshun you, you, is, uh, you, you might say kudos, fully you might say kudos, but pretty, today, unlike pretty, other states and some uh, other institutions. Whereas you say kudos, critics are saying that. Look, you can't even raise, we're talking about IGR, you can't even, you can't even raise taxation if there are no jobs to start with. And um, uh, some of the um, other, you know, contestants are saying that that is something that they will be looking to address uh, should they uh, make the cut. Uh, the whole matter of unemployment in Oshun, um, that is an area perhaps, uh, do you think that will be telling in the election? Uh, the record as far as employment uh, in Oshun, because you, you can only tax a working person. And um, if the person is not working, it, it becomes a lot more difficult. There's no state, no government can be engaging the kind of uh, infrastructural activities that are currently ongoing in Oshun State. I would say that joblessness. No. You know, once there's a development of infrastructural Areas, sectors of go, of this of the state, that will be that will be job. That's job. No, you cannot say that the underemployment issues is a challenge of, of the whole Nigerian Federation. It's of the whole of the Nigerian the Nigerian state. But the issue is that when you have a government like Oyetola who has been engaging in infrastructure development, especially in the areas of road, in the areas of refamping all institutions that were down before it's coming, you cannot say that it's uh, joblessness. The the challenge of uh, un underemployment in Nigeria is a critical challenge of leadership at the national level that I believe uh, needs to be seriously addressed. And you know that in a country like Nigeria, the most important avenue for employment is the area of individual creativity and entrepreneurial skill. And that is where we must get it. In the advanced economies, it is not the government that provides all the jobs. As a matter of fact, it is private individual corporations and entities and multi, uh, multinationals that provide up to 90 to 95 percent of the of the jobs what the job of the government is administration you know but for you to create an enabling environment for businesses to thrive for individual entrepreneurship to thrive and that is what i believe we still has been doing in Oshu state to create an enabling environment for, for for entrepreneurship to thrive for creativity to thrive it now depends on the people to take advantage of those uh, of those amenities, of those uh, opportunities that are being offered by the good governance being offered in Oshun State as of today. You know, the issue is that gov government cannot employ everybody. Rhetorics aside, you know, emotionalism aside, government cannot employ everybody. Government can only, you know, provide the enabling environment for businesses and entrepreneurship to thrive. And that is the, and Nigeria, it is on record that in, in Africa today, Nigerians are among the most creative people in the world, in the area of music, in the area of, of art and culture, in the area of, uh, so, well, name it, Nigerians are all over the place. They are very creative. People are very creative. That you see that a lot of people are now their own employers, you know, thriving in businesses like music, like create, create, the creative industry in Nigeria today is the largest in Africa. The creative industry in Afri in, 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 is the largest in Africa today in Nigeria. So, well, well, people should just take the opportunities that are available. I, you know, the government has succeeded in, creative, in creating a peaceful environment. You know, just take this uh, you know, initiative. I've been doing a lot to mitigate against the insecurity that was prevalent in the state. Actually, in the whole of Southwest, uh, it, it has been working well. And people should just indeed. take opportunities to take uh, in, uh, the opportunities the... offered by the peaceful environment in the state to do mm -hmm. 
Uh, that, that, indeed, whatever that, they have chosen to do. You, you just touched on one of the two areas I was also going to talk about. Well, we, we, we have a little time just before I go on break. The elephant in the room, perhaps, is this whole matter of um, buying or selling of votes, which INEC says is a great concern, uh, coming from their experience in the AKT election. Um, you know, it's a delicate subject, but... Um, I, I, I don't know that in Nigeria politics, especially elections, uh, there will be an absence of uh, the deployment of money. We've heard people boast, I mean, uh, boast beforehand, they will meet Naira for Naira, dollar for dollar, and all that kind of a thing. Uh, what, 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 what can you tell us about that situation? Uh, Oyetola is incumbent. Arguably, there will be no shortage of funds. And, um, but do you think, because the idea now is, don't sell. Of course, don't buy votes. But even you people, don't sell at all. What, what, what do you think the attitude of the average person is going to be to those admonitions? Because um, INEC has you know, engaged with EFCC to be on ground. The, buy, the buying and selling of food is an, is an element of the weaponization of the poverty of the people in this country. It's a weaponization of poverty. It is a criminal weaponization of poverty when you offer money to buy people's food, to buy people's conscience. And because they know that uh, the people are so are in such a compromised state of mind that they will want to, to, to make a living, they just want, even if it's for today, which is uh, extremely counterproductive, but they want to uh, offer them money, they want to sell their food. It's a weaponization of poverty in the country, and it is criminal, and it's unjust, and it's unfair to the sensibilities and psychology of Nigerians who have been so repressed by the socio-economic environment in which we operate. So, and then when you see people, it's unfortunate that the security agencies are not alive to their responsibilities in this respect. Somebody has come out to announce in advance that he's going to commit a crime. Uh, it's going to be dollar for dollar, naira for naira, euro for euro. I have come, I've arrived from abroad with, with loads of money, and that uh, it's going to be... A it, and so they said that he mentioned one word, saying that it is going to be fire for fire. And when you see firing anywhere, you should go back and look at the records and look at the video and say, who said there'll be fire for fire? That must be the person, you know, firing all over. So that is one of the things that people should not be saying. It is, you, ca you cannot be overeating the polity in an environment that you wish to govern. If you get to government by violence, you are going to be removed by violence. People should not okay. boast about money, uh, comrade, about the capacity to unleash uh, violence on the polity, uh, on the I people they want to govern. To, I, I know there's bad. a delay between us. There's a slight delay. Looking at the upcoming election on the 16th uh, in Oshun State, we've touched on a number of areas. Um, he's, it is clear that um, Comrade Mark is um, he's supporting the incumbent governor uh, in, in the race. There are other uh, parties and candidates, and um, uh, we, we, we will hope to be bringing uh, a different view from their point of view, because um, ordinary, it's natural. Uh, Comrade Mark says that his man, uh, the incumbent governor, will win. And um, I have heard other candidates say that they have no doubt that um, they also uh, will win. Uh, among them is uh, uh, Mr. Dileke, among them is uh, uh, Mr. Yusuf uh, Lasso. Uh, but you know, uh, speaking with Comrade Mark now, we will be speaking with other people later on. Now, we've spoken about some of the efforts of the incumbent governor since coming in. With his report card, uh, Comrade Mark is saying, will, you know, uh, stand him in very good stead when it comes to matters of infrastructure, uh, things like that. Um, he's probably not owing salaries. Uh, but let me ask you about insecurity. Uh, we talk, just talked about money in, in, in politics, uh, in election especially, uh, and you, you've given your impression uh, there. But So it's a form of insecurity. Now the other insecurity is that of people going around causing and affecting the peace of, uh, of the place. Um, Amotekun, uh, under, shall we say, the guidance of uh, the Otella administration, that is working with it. How well do you think, have they made that much of a difference, do you think? Uh, well, I think it has made much of a difference because it, uh, things will have gotten worse. Things will have gotten out of hand totally in Oshu State if there was no Amotekun. In fact, it will have be, become a worse situation in the state. But even 
within the challenges that Amateco has to contend with, the fact that you can you see that the, there's a limit to the kind of the caliber of weapons they can carry. They have been able to, to, to perform excellently well, in my, my view. The, the, because if the federal government now allows the Amotecum Corps to be able to carry weapons that will be able to meet uh, with the capacity of the criminals, you see that they will, have done, they, 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 will have, they will have been outstanding. But even within the purview of the environment, the limited environment that they have, they have been able to, 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 perform, uh, to perform well, in my view. And because, you see, if they have come to sort of feel a very huge hiatus, a very huge security hiatus in the ocean state. Without their presence, it seems like farmers will not be able to go to farm today. You know, people will not have been able to go to the markets. All our rules in ocean state and the connecting state will have been impassable because of uh, kidnappers and, and terrorists and killer others who, are, who, have, who have gone haywire all over the, all over the country. So uh, Amotecu has come to make sure that they have been able to mitigate the security challenges of the state. If they were not there, things would have gotten worse. And God forbid that uh, uh, Abutekun is no longer there. It will have been very bad. So we, I believe that the security uh, challenges have been kept at the minimal level because of the pre uh, pre uh, presence of Amotekun and their collaboration with sister security agencies like the police, the DSS, the army, and uh, the NSDC. And I think uh, uh, the Amotekun initiative has come at the right time and is, 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 doing, is doing well. Uh, okay. We're given so let, let, a better working yeah. environment and equipment, they, they, they will serve. Okay. Uh, let me ask this um, last question, um, Comrade Mark Adebayo, um, so that uh, we can get uh, uh, alternative views in terms of callers. And as I said, we're speaking with you today. Uh, ordinarily, we would have wanted to speak with someone else as well, uh, if not more, one or two other people. Uh, but it is the way it panned out. It wasn't exactly our intention. But we will definitely make amends in that direction, um, maybe going forward tomorrow, that kind of a thing. So I wanted to um, uh, ask you, uh, finally, what is the nature of the security challenge uh, in Oshun? Is it internal? Uh, is it external? Uh, you, you mentioned just they're criminals, terrorists. Um, so what is the nature of the... Uh, what, 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 what is it that... Um, just give us a a sort of a, a snapshot of, is it internal people that are bent on robbing people, banditry, causing trouble, or is it uh, terrorists? Well, uh, generally, it's, uh, it's uh, just criminal elements probably from other, from other states who are, who are coming to wreck a folk in the, in the state. But it was, it was much uh, worse, it was terrible before the coming of the present governor and, uh, and before the creation of the uh, Amotekun Security Corps. So after the Amotekun, the coming of Amotekun, we have seen a drastic reduction in the activities of these uh, criminal elements in the, in the state. You know, it got to a, a time that uh, moving from uh, the, 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 moving from Oyo State through Oshun State, going to Ondo State, you know, you see all these criminal elements coming out to kidnap, to kill, to rob people. But it has gone down drastically uh, in the last uh, three years plus. So that is that is the joy uh, that, that we have. These criminal these criminal elements are people who are infiltrated from other other places to come and wreck okay. havoc in the state. It, you saw it, farmers it, it, being attacked, you know, their farms being killed, people being mm -hmm. raped, and the rest of that. But it has gone down. It has gone down in terms drastically. Of, uh, you know, because of the efforts of, of Amotekun the... and the kudos to the government of the day. Um, is, is Oshun State, uh, as it were, uh, tourist friendly, by which I mean, you know, people from, you know, around the country uh, could, could visit them, uh, could visit the state of Oshun, uh, or is it a no-go area um, from, in your view, in terms of people looking at Oshun and saying that, uh, let me take a trip to Oshun, is it an advisable uh, course of action right now? Well, Oshun, Oshun State is one of the most peaceful states in the, in the country today, as of today. It's one of, the, if not the, the most peaceful uh, today. It's a place, uh, you know, with peaceful environment, with peaceful people, peace-loving people. It's a place you can go to for tourism. It's a place you can to go to for relaxation. It's a state you can go and invest uh, in. It's, uh, it's not, it doesn't have the kind of uh, scaled-up security challenges as we have either in the Northeast or the Northwest. 
Uh, not even in the adjoining states. You know, adjoining states is a very peaceful, probably the most peaceful uh, in the country today. It doesn't have the kind of security challenges, as case security challenges that other states have. It's a state that is not just relatively peaceful. It's a state that is peaceful and secure, you know, uh, because of the character of the people. As Omolua B, the Omolua B culture of the Oshun people uh, makes uh, Oshun, Oshun State a peaceful, progressive, and uh, forward-looking state. It's a state that uh, is going to uh, be a model for all states in the, in, in the country, especially with the kind of, if you have the kind of caliber of leadership that uh, Utola is providing in the state. Uh, it's a peaceful state, it's a state you can go and invest, it's a state you can go and relax, it's a state you can sleep with your two eyes closed. I think uh, the state is, uh, is, is peaceful, it's secure enough. You, know, you cannot okay. compare it well, with all other states with all the all manner of security why, challenges. Because that, of the collaboration uh, of the that's people. That's quite reassuring, Comrade uh, Mark Adebayo. It's a fine place uh, to lead it. And uh, I want to thank you yes. very much for making uh, time for us. In terms of the uh, expectations, your expectation is that your man is going to coast, you know, to victory. And it doesn't matter that other people are saying as much themselves that they know that in a level playing ground, doesn't they matter. will take the cake. Uh, you are saying, well, everybody is entitled to their opinion, but it is your understanding that Governor Yutola won't have uh, that much of a problem, right? For sure. For sure, certainly. I get you. I like the, I like the you AOK so signal. Me, so, so thank you very much. Okay. So there you go. Uh, moments uh, with Comrade uh, Mark Adebayo uh, in our Abuja studio. Um, his horse in the race clearly is the incumbent governor. So now is the turn for other people, our viewers, uh, uh, to, to let us hear either if they agree with him or if they have an alternative opinion. But he's spoken quite highly about uh, the efforts of um, uh, the governor uh, in place. Things like infrastructure, yeah. Uh, indebtedness of the state, he says it's impossible, you know, to you know, not incur some debt. But I even heard Governor Oyetola himself say that he has actually, uh, his administration has worked at reducing such debts, uh, debt, I think to the tune of something around 80 million uh, uh, Naira, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Is it 80 or 800? Something like that. So, you know, everybody sort of, this is the time to, 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 to campaign and put what you are doing out there. Uh, the incumbent governor, you could say, has the inside track, but not always. It, it isn't always like that. Sometimes incumbents uh, are defeated, but uh, Comrade Mark said there's no danger of that happening as far as he's concerned. Uh, good morning, Mazi Okorafo. What? <laughs> I don't know what line it is. I hope it's a, a good line um, because yes, yesterday we, we had this kind of a problem. As soon as somebody picks up, when we lose it again. Uh, just, just please uh, keep on trying. Security in Oshun, you heard him say it's a, it's, oh, Mazi is back. Uh, that was quick. Good morning, Mazi. Yeah. Good morning, Sayori. Okay. It's okay. How yeah. to secure Oshun State election comes up again. At least we pray for a free and current election for the Oshun, for Nigeria as a whole. Okay. But the question is this. If this issue of uh, assassination attempts, Burning of houses are called and level. it doesn't make sense. Now, if you see that now, let us look at it historically. A country that belongs to Nigeria, we are seeing what is happening in Sri Lanka today. I was very happy when I saw some elite, uh, some lady claim with the uh, shop, massaging themselves with the presidential uh, massage in, in, the, in Sri Lanka, presidential house. I even at Jurawa was just uh, lying on the president's bed at, <laughs> at this level. Right. But let's come back to Nigeria. All these issues. Whether it was uh, hired people or not hired people, the use are the weapons of this mass destruction. And the same use, the government is for the government is for everybody, the government for the future of everybody. Why must you allow yourself to be used? The weapon of mass destruction in your own state, whether you're coming from outside, if not, it's not here. Honestly speaking, I will advise people in our state, please go out. Your campaign, people come out and vote. But this issue of voter apathy, they have not told us how many people that will be voting by Saturday. 
Because if you look at the kids, they speak, they sold us 900,000, less than 1 million. Not up to 700 voters. What happened to 200 something thousand people? This is what the political parties should go down now to discuss with. Not the minds of the people. That is invoke them to come out and vote. That's the only solution. It is. I think the present government is, is doing well. Based on the analysis we got last week and this week, fine and good. But the question is that it is not the process for the new political party. What I mean, the, the, the present political party to do what? To show their potentiality that they are capable of contesting, they are capable to fight for the, the party presently. We pray for a free affair. The youth, please come out and vote. Please, 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 do not allow anybody to use you as a weapon of. Good morning, back to the salad with all our brothers and sisters. Thanks to God bless all of us. Have a pleasant day. Thank you very much, uh, Mazi uh, Okorua. For and on that point there, that advice, that advice there uh, to come out and vote, especially the youth, uh, they form the bulk of potential voters anyhow. Um, the youths are changing, uh, you know, in my opinion. When you look at uh, the activities of uh, youths, you know, uh, all over the country, you see the fervor with which some youths are going for uh, their PVCs. This means that, unlike before, they intend to make an impact now. Um, parties, different parties are using uh, this particular, deploying this particular aspect, uh, perhaps, um, you know, with different levels of seriousness. But you certainly see a lot of youths jam-packing centers where they uh, can get their PVC cards, and that's because they intend to vote, which, which is heartwarming if you look at it, uh, because now uh, they intend to vote. The other aspect of it, of course, is that uh, they, they need to be sure that their votes will count, and you have INEC, you have INEC, uh, INEC, uh, is, is um, you know, it, it, it's, it's just going from strength to strength. Uh, it's, it's using the experience in one place uh, to amend things in the other. So um, once people know that their vote will count, and the youths that I have seen, everybody has seen it on social media, on television, jam-packing venues to get the PVC because they intend to vote for their own candidate, that's the way to go, uh, not least of all, in Oshun. Uh, I understand that Babalala has called in. Good morning, Mr. Babalala. Good, good morning, Takuyori. Good morning, sir. Please go ahead. Your, 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 your take on uh, uh, the, you know, what's going on I, I, towards the election. Do you get uh, coming back? He does not actually have done well in his, own, in, his own, in his own way, but he has to come out clear and clean. The issue of all this attack and attack, they have been attacking people before now. You know, there is a particular tendency within the Indonesian state. The top, the other progressives, they were, they, they, they were being attacked. You do. Your cousin, Moshobo, was in the know of all this. And this attack, Within the same political family. And now, in the next few days, we'll be having this. You've attacked these people, and we let me regard that these people that have been attacked as a working for some people within the government. So, this has to be stopped. Two days ago, somebody who is an aspirant within APC, he was attacked. So, I think there is, there is need for us to, to stop all this. Governor was in order to campaign with was it not last week. There was gone short. We didn't even left. So, it has to be stopped. Yes, we, the opposition should be peaceful for everybody to come out and vote. Indeed. Indeed. Can I ask you, so, can, can I ask you, Mr. Babalola, what, what's your observation? Uh, in Ede there, where you are situated, um, uh, the attitude of the youth to uh, obtaining their permanent voter, voter card? I'm all, I'm all this. I'm from Ede. I'm an APC member. I'm an aspirant in the last, in the coast of the primary of assembly. You see, 
I don't know of any other local government. In the South local government, we have collected more than even enough. So the youth have they've collected their people and they are ready to vote. So, so, so we are just what we are employing all the security apparatus within an ourselves to just please have a peace so that people will come out and vote. Indeed. So as far as you're concerned, you don't expect voters apathy on that day. All other things yeah, being equal. With, with all this brain going all around, obviously there's going to be voters apathy. Okay. I, I, I get so this, that is what I, I'm saying that there is need for, for the doctor and the, all other critical stakeholders in Nigeria to come out and assure people of their safety. All right, then. As you know, there's going to be a, a, a peace accord tomorrow uh, that everybody involved with that election uh, will be expected to append their signature to, to agree to maintain the peace. That surely would help a bit. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Babalala, for uh, calling in there. Um, wor worrying signals, but uh, everybody seems to be on top of it. We, as we said, tomorrow, General Abdul Salami's um, uh, peace uh, committee uh, will be in town, and everybody will come in there. It's going to be another opportunity for people to sort of, um, uh, you know, come to an agreement that the thing to do is to go ahead with the peaceful conduct of this election. Uh, the violence, as it is alleged, and people are calling in and say, never mind alleged, I can see it, it is there. They seem to be targeting, you know, one, 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 you know, uh, one candidate or the other. Uh, our guest earlier, Comrade Mark, had said that he doesn't see any reason why the incumbent governor, who he says is quite popular, uh, would have any time to be attacking anybody. There simply is not any need to it. Uh, for it, and that it's illogical. Uh, good morning, Ada. I thank God to you. I'm, I'm through. Uh, good morning, my guest. Eh? Mr. Yori. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you. No, my worry is this. Yesterday, I watched over the television. They were showing uh, that there's some, uh, I don't know, there's one man, APC from Mori. They said uh, they were embarking back on the uh, that morning. So they, they were interrogating her. I said, why should that be a very close election? I don't know. You know I don't know. If there's anything like that morning, let them leave it till after the election. This is what she said. That she said that they just came back from Zampara. You know, that they have been going around the city. Why, why didn't they start that off with Shun first? You know, that's what I'm trying to say. So let them not do anything that will suggest that they are trying to buy votes indirectly. Then I haven't said that again. I'm trying to say that. The EFCC is not just about wearing their whatever apron or whatever and going about with the instruction on the, on the, on the, on the security agencies. When you don't, uh, uh, I mean, arrest people who are involved, involved in good buying that they can see with their eyes on the EFCC, and they, they, nobody is prosecuted, it will continue. But enforcement of laws helps to regulate people's behavior. Then I next should be an unbiased umpire, and remain neutral, starting from uh, registration and distribution of issues. Election is not a do or die affair. The winner should be magnanimous in the big street, and the losers, the losers should be entitled to the state or sportsmanship. The electors should also conduct themselves well. The nine should also let them um, reposition that they are swollen boot, you know? In such a way that you cannot, you cannot see what the, uh, who the person has voted for. And then people should not be allowed to use cameras. You know, there are a lot of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If, they are, if they are still, you understand? Not allow, every time we keep on hearing the same story. I know they did well in the, in the outing. They tried, apart from the vote buying, but there is room for in, in Okay, Ada, we, 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 we've got to go accord. now. Please accord. The peace accord doesn't make sense to me. If they cannot arrest anybody who breaks that accord. Okay. God bless you. God thank, God. thank you very much for calling in, Ada. You know, take all your comments aboard. Um, okay, so that's our program. Uh, please join us tomorrow. Uh, and as I said, we'll have alternative views on the election in Oshun. Join us tomorrow for a fresh edition. I'm Yori Polari. Bye-bye for now.